Hello, you're watching Telecom TV from the TIP Summit at the FUSE 2022 event here in Madrid. And I am talking today with Alec Goldner, who is Director of 5G Open Standard Strategy with NEC, and Vinesh Nal, Head of Pre-Sales Global Open RAN Center of Excellence at NEC. Very nice to talk to you both about this because the whole, the whole subject of open RAN is fascinating the whole industry and we really want to, to learn more about the stage we're at and the challenges we, we, we face. But before we get on to open RAN, I'd just like to talk a little bit more about TIP. And Ala, why is NEC an active participant in TIP? You know, there are uh, many industry standardization organizations actually contributing to ORAN requirements. ORAN Alliance and 3GPP clearly the major ones, but there are also ETSI at the same, there is ETSI and FV, there are other organizations also developing a different sets of requirements applying to a different parts of ORAN solution. But then there is a need in one organization actually consolidated those requirements into a single specification which needs to be supported by the vendors and this is what is happening in TIP and of course we as a vendor need to comply to that set of requirements so this is why we see TIP importance as the highest and this is why you know we strongly participate and we contribute to TIP activities. I'm looking at some specifics here how has TIP's test and validation framework helped you in your product development? Uh, so, you know, a test and validation basically defines the release of specification to which we need to comply. And when we comply to that release, we basically are ready for interoperability by that release with other vendors or for the specific service providers. So this is why, you know, there is that newly released 2.1 specification of the uh, different parts of Oran, and this is why we believe it is extremely important for us to invest and contribute to that and to put our products uh, applicability to, the, to that release. So this is why just going to be announced later today, we did put 12 of our RUs through that uh, conform, through that actually batching testing of TIP to comply with release 2.1 and we are going to be issued a bronze badge later today again. And when we do that, basically we sign to the community that our RU is ready for interoperability by that set of the requirements with additional vendors willing to go through that test. And we believe this is an essential step really in us working with other vendors and with service providers. So, so tell us about some of the, uh, what, what one of the, um, the, the new announcements you, you've just made. TIP has launched a new release 2.1 specification of its requirements. A few weeks ago, basically covering RU, CU, DU, management and orchestration addition on top of release 2.0 requirements. And we are going to be the first vendor who actually issue bronze badge by applying to that newly released set of requirements because we believe that by doing that actually we put our products into interoperability with additional vendors and to the service providers participating in TIP on the marketplace which is extremely important for us and also match our goals being a radically open company in open run. And Vinesh, it's TIP also likes to bring the community together and bring its members together. Here at Fuse, what are you getting out of this? What, what do you most look forward to when you, when, you, when you come to this event? Sure. For, for me, it's connecting with industry veterans, partners and customers, right? So it's, it's great to have all of them in, under one roof, uh, under a very informal setup. So it's not a formal meeting room of sorts. Um, and we get to speak about a lot of things, I mean, about where we're progressing, about uh, TCO impacts, about uh, pricing that we give to customers. We, we speak a lot of these things over here. And for me personally, it's, it's the networking. It, it's been amazing to meet pretty much who's who of Open RAN and connecting with them again. So it's, uh, of course, most of them have been impaired by travel <laughs> restrictions in the past, but uh, I think it's, it's good to connect with them again. Well, can I ask you, Vinesh, you know, what's next for NEC in terms of your open and disaggregated journey? So next for us, I think we are looking for large-scale commercial rollouts in open RAN. So, so we see this already started across Europe and in, in certain markets. Uh, but again, the brownfield adoption of open RAN, I think that's happening as we speak. 
and we are expecting a lot of these to go mainstream uh, quite soon enough. So that's that's one part we are really excited to uh, to see, and of course, uh, you know the wider ecosystem coming together as well. So so till date we've had a certain set of vendors participating. Now I see this opening up to a lot more vendors collaborating. So that's that's what I'm excited about. That's good to hear. Well, let's let's move on to specifically look at Open RAN now and Alan. TIP has a long history in Open RAN, as does NEC. You know, what are you doing with TIP regards the development of Open RAN? Uh, so, you know, uh, those releases of TIP specification, as I say, consolidate requirements coming from a different standardization organization and actually produce a single set of requirements which is applicable to the products by input coming from the service provider specifically in TIP on which requirements they anticipate to be a mandatory in their set of products. So for us, this is why we believe in the importance of that set of requirements and we contribute actually to producing that set of requirements. Not only we contribute to producing that set of requirements and by the way, requirements are separately done in a different sub-working group for RU, CU, DU, for the network management and orchestration and Roma sub-working group, we contribute to all those. But not only we contribute and by making that, we assure that actually the requirements as we see that, along with the service providers we are working with, find their way into TIP. We then apply for badging to actually make sure and sign to service providers that we've passed that set of requirements and we are compliant with the specification. So we are ready for interoperability with other vendors. You know, important to highlight for our strategy, we strongly believe that Oran by definition is multi-vendor environment. This is also, we strongly believe in TIP as a place where interoperability is being exercised. And Vinesh, what is NEC's view of Open RAN and, and how does it fit with your telco strategy? So NEC has been a very strong proponent of Open RAN, uh, again, starting with the Japanese market. So, so I think that, that's been our first market with Open RAN, where we've gone commercial and mainstream. So uh, we saw the success of that. We saw the viability of Open RAN for, uh, for mass market rollout. And so we brought Open RAN into the global world from our, from our offering point of view. Uh, so Open RAN is evident in all our products that we bring to the global market, so in, in the RAN space. So starting all the way from radios, going all, all the way to SMO uh, and so on, right? So, uh, so which is why we branded ourselves as Open Networks and uh, we will continue promoting and investing in Open RAN. I, you know, Alan, it's, it's very obvious that NEC really supports Open RAN. Tell, tell us a bit more about how it fits in with your overall strategy. Yes, of course. So, you know, we have all parts of our own system. We have RU, we have recently launched CUDU for international market. We have, of course, a SMO non-real-time rig as a part of management and orchestration system. We also recently acquired Aspire company, which is leading a provider of system integration and solutions in Oran. Along with that, it is very important to highlight that we while doing that and while having all the pieces of Oran solution, it is not our objective to bring that as a whole one. It is rather our objective to bring, a, you know, an extended system to actually to have an ecosystem with all parts, but then integrate with additional vendors on each part of the system. This is why, you know, our strategy in Oran especially is strongly aligned with the strategy of TIP of interoperability. And this is why, by the way, we recently applied to that bronze badging of TIP for our 12 RUs, which were launched earlier this year, as it is very important for us to put that on the marketplace on TIP and to be, to, 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 to have them ready for interoperability, interoperability with additional vendors of TIP who wants to participate in TIP and who wants to show to sign to the service providers believing in TIP that we are ready with our interoperable solutions. Thanks, Al. Good to, good to hear that. Um, and Vinesh, what are the challenges that still need to be overcome if Open Man is to really achieve its full potential? I think there are some challenges which we see, uh, but, but NEC as a system integrator, we're tackling them head on. Uh, and then we're getting a lot of support from the ecosystem partners. Uh, this, we, uh, there's, of, of course, a comparison against feature parity uh, and, of course, the TCO benefits that incumbents offer. So what we are working as an industry uh, with the ecosystem partners is to narrow down that gap. So, so we already see tremendous investment and positive movements, both in the feature parity and the TCO optimization. Uh, this comes with volume, of course, as well. And uh, we see 
you know, more adoption from customers helping us in terms of getting the economies of scale as well. So uh, we're progressing on that. That's, that's good. And Al, a final question for you. you know, how can TIP help, help you and the industry overcome some of these challenges? Uh, so we see TIP again as the place where vendors collaborate, right? Because, you know, standard organizations are fine, but eventually someone has to take those standards and bring that subset of requirements which is important for a specific service provider. Not only that, but the recent trend in standards for the last few years is actually instead of working hard and reach consensus on one single solution, go for multiple solutions and multiple configuration, which is better better than nothing, let me put it very straight, it is better than wait for years until specification is done, but then we as a vendor, in order to be cost effective, really need service provider to consolidate their requirements and bring up only a few configurations which they request us as a vendors to support, and that was widely covered also yesterday during the discussions. And this is why, you know, we strongly believe that TIP can be such a place of actually consolidated that requirements and you know, by service providers actually discussing those. Uh, yesterday, there was also an announcement of Vodafone and Entity Docomo actually on their memorandum of understanding of bringing joint testing and validation framework. We strongly believe in such an activities that by doing that activity, actually service provider would bring to us as a vendors a consolidated requirements for single configuration, Two configurations, perhaps, you know, massive MIME, C band, such a two G, such a two R, whatever, right? But for us, as Vinesh has mentioned, we need to be cost effective. And TIP can be a perfect place for that. Great, it's good to hear. Ella and Vinesh, thank you both very much indeed for joining us today. Thanks thank for having you. us. Thank you.